you guys don't know, according to Ken Berger of the Bleacher Report, Dan Gilbert seems to have a little bit of a favorite. Man crush, city. Man crush. Little man crush. And that is with Isaiah Thomas. So I guess during the short time with the Cavaliers, Isaiah Thomas has become a fan or has become, you know, friended with Dan Gilbert. Dan mm-hmm. Gilbert and them, you know, exchange calls and text messages daily. Not daily, but they do exchange often. So it's weird. You know, it's it's a little bit weird, and I think it's becoming an issue with some of the players in the locker room from what this report is saying. What do we think of this little like situ what do we think of the situation in general? I mean, is it is it weird? It's weird. Considering the fact that Isaiah Thomas has done virtually nothing except hurt the team since he's been there, it makes no sense. Yeah. Not only that, but he's he's the biggest complainer right now on the team by all reports. Mm-hmm. He's the biggest reason why they're losing games. You know, is just in as far as a singular player is concerned, they, their their problems play wise are much more deep seated than just Isaiah Thomas. Right. But his complaining and the way he plays and kind of the selfishness he's shown trying to get his big contract extension is one of the bigger reasons that they're losing games and not playing that well since he's been there. But then it's kind of strange too because it's by all accounts Dan Gilbert was the one who made the trade for Isaiah Thomas, traded a, you know, a franchise level player in Kyrie Irving for a guy with a hip injury. Yeah. It's just it's kind of fishy, you know. Yeah, I think just thinking about this trade and just looking back on the perspective of Isaiah Thomas, the thing I hate about it is that he doesn't own accountability to Saying like, oh, I don't know why you guys are blaming me for their for the chemistry issues. You know, I I don't know why I, like I'm being the scapegoat now. Well, the reason why is because you reportedly ousted Kevin Love in the team meeting. Yeah. Like you made it a priority to when when you have when you are traded to a new team mm-hmm. and you don't know the history or the situation. I usually stay like in any situation you stay out of it until you're more familiar with the team. You know, when you get into the playoffs, maybe then you have a little bit more say or, you know, towards the end of the season, you have a little bit more say on what happens and what goes on. But, you know, as a new guy that comes in, you're finally in playing now after, you know, you've recovered from your hip injury. Mm -hmm. And I still think you are recovering a little bit. You decide to call out players for their effort and, uh, you know, ask them where they've been at. When yeah. Kevin Love obviously was sick, obviously was hurt. And he's he's been there for yeah. years. He's part of the reason they won a championship, you know, and been to the finals for the three years, four years pr- prior to you mm-hmm. being here. So for a guy like Isaiah Thomas, who's done, like I said, basically nothing except hurt the team to call somebody out who's been there yeah. and is a veteran of the squad, it's just like it's such a sensitive move, you know? Yeah. And not even just sensitive, but it's just like, it, it it personally is making me view Isaiah Thomas in a different light. Like I kind of like him less since all this stuff has been coming out about what he's doing and saying in the locker room, and that that whole situation makes the the weird friendship between him and Dan Gilbert even stranger. You know, yeah. And Dan Gilbert, if there's no plot by LeBron to come back and try and own this team, like we discussed yesterday. This is, I mean, he's established, he's essentially cutting off all ties of getting LeBron back. Yeah. Uh, it's just like, just unbelievable how this situation has occurred. Isaiah Thomas, I still like the guy and I still think he's a great player, but he's not. I think the media and everyone that was watching the game got fooled by the system he was in in Boston. When we yeah. saw that he scored 29 points in Boston, we were like, oh, wow, like, you know, with the right coaching in the right situation, he can't score 29 points. Mm-hmm. And that's the fact. The right situation and the right coaches can help him score 29 points a game. But as we saw throughout his career, and I think we talked about it earlier, he's a 15-point-a-game type of player. Not only that, but he's been ousted by two different teams before the Celtics yeah. for being difficult to be around. So, yeah, it's just, it's it's so strange all around. And, you know... Dan Gilbert is really running the franchise into the ground at the moment. Mm-hmm. And maintaining your Brooklyn pick, which is probably going to be somewhere in the 10 to 15 range, you know, does that really save the franchise, you know? No. And no offense to a guy like Miles Bridges, who's somewhere in that range. Like, that guy or the other guys in there, 
they're not franchise altering players, really. No. You know, there's probably either you know maybe two or three, potentially. Yeah. And this is all based on potential, and like we talked about before, LeBron James is not wanting and willing to play with a rookie. He wants to play with experienced veterans who have playoff experience because in the NBA today, you know, a 19 year old isn't going to help you win the championship. Yeah. What you do with them is you grow and develop them. So. Looking back at it, you know, Dan Gilbert, you've made some terrible moves. Now you're befriending a player that the players are starting to get a little weary of mm-hmm. and questioning, you know, what's what's the what's the agenda? Like Tyrone Lue has said specifically, we have players with agendas and they need to get rid of them. So I think, like we talked about before, Isaiah has an agenda. He's trying to get a max contract. He's He's trying to do everything he can to become that cream of the crop type of player the problem is he's just not that guy and the fact that i the players have to see what isaiah thomas is doing right now and not be happy about it yeah you're not doing anything but hurting the team and you're becoming friends with the owner just in the sense that you probably want your mega contract you know and your only chance of doing it no team in the league is going to see the way he's playing and give him a mega contract Mm -hmm. it's just not happening so his only chance is to be, you know, do something for the Cavaliers. And probably in his perspective, becoming friends with the guy who's going to pay him is probably his best shot of doing mm-hmm. it. It's, it's, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. And you can't build a, your championship team or like a team around Isaiah when he's already 29 years old and you're trying to use that pick to get a player. Yeah. That is like, you know, 1920 and he won't really help you out. I mean, that's all I really got to say about it. Say about it. It's on. It's really a bummer to see. Yeah, like, it's disappointing for sure. Cause, and, and I know a lot of people aren't necessarily big fans of the Cavs, but it's hard to deny that the Cavs being competitive for the last five years or the last four years against the Warriors hasn't made the NBA more entertaining. Mm-hmm. So to see this team that had great moments and had a classic sports moment ever, you know, with the three to one comeback against the Warriors. That's classic as far as NBA. That's one of, you know, the greatest moments in series ever we've we've ever seen. Mm-hmm. So to see it all come apart at the seams like this is just like it's really disheartening for the NBA. Yeah, it kind of gets rid of a competition and it's basically becoming what, you know, all industries are turning into now. It's just one it's just themselves that they're competing against, and that's the Warriors right now. It's like, it's kind of, the NBA right now is, is turning into what the world is right now in, like, the video game area, mm-hmm. in sports itself. You know, there's no other professional league. Just politics in general. Yeah. It's also everybody's at each other's throat all the time. Yeah. Even on your own team, you can't be happy and just find the, you know, the positives in your teammates. Yeah, it's turning into just... One one team is going to win everything, and everyone else is just beneath them. And even then, every everybody needs to be angry at something, you know. Yeah. And the Warriors have the referees. The Cavaliers have each other. The Houston Rockets have other teams. Like mm-hmm. they all have something, you know. Yeah. So it's, it's disheartening. Disheartening. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it for the Isaiah talk. That kind of sums up our Cavs' feelings. Kind of sad. Yeah.